inverse. Oh look, there's already a minus one. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Payam. Yay! Alright, hello everyone. And today I'm gonna present the method of variation of parameters, which is very, very scary from calculus. But I will show you that using linear algebra, it actually becomes very neat. And I invite you to also look at the second part where you'll see the similarities between this talk and this part and the next one. So today, our goal is to solve the differential equation y double prime plus y equals to tangent of x. find the complete solution, and by the way, before I do anything, instead, let's say you have a coefficient of 2 here, just divide everything by 2 to get 1, because this technique really works if the coefficient of the highest term is 1. So just to get rid of that, but fortunately the coefficient here is 1, and let me quickly recap, how do you solve this equation? Well, it turns out um, you have to do two things. You, first of all, you have to find a homogeneous solution. And the way you find this is by setting the right-hand part equal to zero. So y double prime plus y equals to zero. And then you find your auxiliary equation. So auxiliary equation here. It's r squared because you have two primes, so this becomes a two, and then here we have no prime, so we get one equals to zero. If you solve this, you get r equals to plus or minus i, and then you get our homogeneous solution, y not x, y, y not x equals to a cosine of x plus b sine of x. That's the homogeneous solution. It turns out it's very crucial for the method of variation of parameters. Wait. Because what does the variation of parameters method say? Let's just guess the same form of the solution, except instead of having constants a and b, you have functions. Let's call it v1 and v2. So, for the particular solution, solution, the idea is just guess that your particular solution it's given again by the same form, except the coefficients become functions. So let's guess the particular solution equals to v1 of x cosine of x plus v2 of x sine of x. And again, we want to find the v1s and v2, so double UTF. All right. Now, in calculus, they give you a very complicated formula to memorize. It turns out you can write this formula very neatly using linear algebra. So let me give you the variation of parameters formula. So the bar of par formula. Var of par ha ha ha. Okay. Oh ha ha ha. What does that say? It has to deal with what's called the wrong skin. I guess wrong skin matrix. And the way you form it is. You take your two solutions here, cosine and sine, sine of x, and you differentiate the hell out of it until you get a square matrix. So here to get a 2 by 2 matrix, you just differentiate this and you differentiate this. So minus sine of x and cosine of x. So again, this is the wrong skin. And let's call it W squilde of W tilde of X. And of course, mathematicians, just beware, technically the wrong skin is a determinant of that, but I'll just call wrong skin this wrong skin matrix. And so 
matrix applied to what? Applied to the derivatives of v1 and v2 equals to what? Turn down for what? Okay, what do you put here? Everything is zero except for the last term. So the first term is always zero. The last term is our tangent. And that's our formula. And what do we want to do? We want to solve for v1 and v2. So let's do it. Turns out in the 2 by 2 case, it's really not that bad. What do we have? Well, if we solve it literally, v1 prime, v2 prime. Again, that's the amazing thing about linear algebra. You can solve for stuff. Okay, that equals to the this matrix cosine x sine of x minus sine of x cosine x inverse. Oh look, there's already a minus one. Here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the coincidence zero and tangent of x. But remember, for two by two matrix, it's easy to find the inverse. Namely, the inverse of ABCD is 1 over AD minus BC. Okay, so just 1 over the determinant. And then what do you do? You switch this A and D to get D and A. D and A. And then B and C just becomes negative. So negative B, negative C. So let's do that. So by this formula, that equals to 1 over cosine times cosine, cosine squared of x, minus sine times minus sine, so minus sine of x, sine squared of x. But lo and behold, this becomes cosine squared plus sine squared, which is just 1. So this 1 over AD minus BC is just 1, so hey, it's not that bad. And now, this cosine, you switch it with cosine, and how cute, you just get the same thing. The fixed point, sine becomes minus sine, and minus sine becomes sine. Zero and tangent of x. So it turns out, here it's pretty straightforward, you just multiply both sides, you know, the matrix by this vector, and you get, in the end, minus of so cosine of x times 0 plus minus sine of x times tangent of x. So you get minus sine of x tangent of x and sine times 0, 0 plus cosine tangent tangent of x. And, well, let's simplify this a little bit if you want. Tangent is sine over cosine, so this becomes minus sine squared x over cosine of x. And cosine tangent, that's just cosine times sine over cosine, so it just becomes sine. Great. Okay. I know you might be excited to write a secant, you know, be my guest. Okay, so what do we find? we really find that v1 prime and v2 prime equals to minus sine squared x over cosine of x and sine of x. That's very great because it tells you that v1 prime equals to this junk, v2 prime equals to this junk. And then to get our v1 and v2, let's just integrate. So v1 of x becomes the anti an the an antiderivative, whichever one you want, of sine squared x over cosine of x dx. Okay. Dx people out there. And okay, <laughs> I will not do this. Steve can do this if he wants, but you get sine of x minus ln of absolute value of tangent of x plus secant of x. And again, we just want an antiderivative, so don't worry about the constant. So just leave it like that. And then, okay, finally for v2, well, it's just an antiderivative of sine of x. v2 of x equals in 
integral of sine of x dx, and that's minus cosine of x. Fantastic! We found v1 and we found v2, therefore we find our particular solution equals to sine of x minus ln absolute value tangent of x plus secant of x of this multiplied by cosine of x plus minus cosine of x sine of x. Again, I forgot to say that's you know, v1 cosine plus v2 sine. Remember that. Now, it turns out if you expand this, you get sine of x times cosine of x minus cosine of x times sine of x. So this junk just disappears and you end up with minus ln of tangent of x plus secant of x times cosine of x. <laughs> Good luck guessing that with undetermined coefficients. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, once you have that, you have our solution. Because what do we know? We know that the general solution is just a homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. And that's a cosine of x plus b sine of x plus this horrible thing, minus, sorry, minus ln of tangent of x plus secant of x times cosine of x. Whoa! And I'm not quite done, just one more thing. So you might, you may object, you know, objection your honor, you know, that why did I just use this weird linear algebra technique to do, you know, something you could just do with calculus by memorizing this formula? Well, it turns out that you can easily generalize this to higher order systems. Uh, or not systems, also systems, but also higher order equations. So note, let's say you have some differential equation, and I'm too, er too lazy to say which one. Suppose you have an equation where you get the homogeneous solution is a e to the 2x plus b e to the 3x plus c e to the 4x. Well, and suppose, yeah, then the way to get the right, the inhomogeneous solution, the particular solution, would be the same thing as before. So v1 of x e to the 2x plus v2 of x e to the 3x plus v3 of x e to the 4x. And again, we want to find all, those, all this junk. It turns out you can easily generalize this formula. How? Well, in this case, put all those terms here, e to the 2x, e to the 3x, e to the 4x, differentiate the hell out of this, so 2e to the 2x, and then 4e to the 2x, 3e to the 3x, 9e to the 3x, 4e to the 4x, 16e to the 4x, then v1 prime, v2 prime, v3 prime equals to, again, everything is zero except for the inhomogeneous term. Obviously, good luck inverting this matrix, but using, you know, the infamous Kramer's rule or this adjugate matrix technique, you can find, in theory, the inverse of this. Thank you very much. And before you guys go, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Dr. Payan Show.